Okay, so this is the box. Uh, obviously, this is a mini console, so it's not it's not large, but it's a pretty good size, you know. Um, I was actually nervous that this didn't have the paddle set inside of it, um, but it says it does. So, um, oh man, you'll have to forgive me for really taking my time here, um, but I've been uh, really looking forward to this one. I'm a big uh, big fan of arcades. Not necessarily a huge Taito guy. But this unit in particular has just piqued my interest and I've been very excited for it. And obviously with hopes to be able to utilize the uh, SD card slot that's on there. Man, if we can get stuff, oh, look at this, this is cool. Okay, the controller is actually a little smaller than I anticipated. Um, this is the trackball controller. I'll get some prettier shots later. So this is the trackball controller box. I don't have like a banana, banana for scale but you can see it's it's pretty small. I actually expected this to be a bit bigger. I mean, I'm not necessarily like disappointed. Um, the, the quality of the knob in the, the ball itself appear to be pretty high quality, but I will say this is a really cool box. This is more that kind of glossy uh, box that you would expect from, you know, just any sort of packaging. You've got the Taito little character. I don't know his name actually. Again, I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a, uh, uh, I think I think this character existed but didn't have a name. It's like Joy Coon maybe, something like that. I'm not I'm not actually sure. But Taito there. This is a very clean box. Like this this, even just in itself, in and of itself looks would look really cool. So uh, just for now, I'm just gonna take these out and uh, get them out of the way. But having this box set that also has the release date on it is awesome. That's just you know, um, as a as a collector, uh, it's really cool to have any kind of, uh, you know, part of history or receipts or dates or prices on there is kind of cool to have. Now, kind of having trouble pulling this out here. I think I'm gonna lay it, lay it down flat. Again, the collector in me is always so nervous to do anything like unnecessarily make creases or anything. So I'm just trying to grab this without messing it up here. I might, actually I might just flip it upside down. Oh, okay, I think we got it. Oh, this looks great. Okay. Okay, I have to admit, I've been very excited for this, so I may a bit be a bit like biased in a sense in that I'm, I've just been very excited for this, but wow, look at that. It's got a great uh, splash screen here. I'm, I'm thinking this is the, um, there's two games on here that uh, I'm not actually totally familiar. Actually, oh, okay, on the side here, it's got all of the games listed, uh, and that one was the fighting game. It's kind of, it looks like a Street Fighter sort of a knockoff, um, and I think it's this one, uh, Don Kuga here, uh, which is a, apparently a, like a sequel or an update that was never released ever to Kaiser Knuckle, which I'm also not familiar with, but leading up to this coming out, I've been researching all of these games. Uh, I've been very, uh, looking forward to it. I'm especially looking forward to games like Kiki Kai Kai, which is the predecessor to, um, Pocky and Rocky. Um, I have a, a Sega Genesis and was always on the fence on buying, uh, I don't see it here, it's, it's here somewhere, um, the New Zealand story here, um, just kind of a funny game where you play uh, as one of those uh, Kiwi bird characters and I was always on the fence of buying it, I'm glad I never did because now I own it uh, in this form which is really cool, um, lots of bubble, bubble, bubble games, elevator action especially looks really cool, um, yeah but a lot of these I've never played. Um, and, but I've heard really good things about Kaiser Knuckle and this Don Kuka game is apparently an update to it that was never released. So, you know, I guess theoretically it should be an upgrade in, in, in all ways, right? So here's the back of the box. This is a wonderful, the, the, the packaging on this is, is stupendous. And, um, on the top, it has a spot where you can put, uh, display cards. So we'll see those in a moment. Um, I uh, I hope to, I'll probably go as far, especially if we can load our own games onto this at some point. Um, you, you already know a lot of people are gonna make their own cards, especially if they don't read or speak Japanese. I can speak Japanese better than I can write it. Um, so, I, I mean, graphically they're gonna look really cool, but I may wanna up like make my own, or if someone designs some, I'd be more than happy to print some out, that'd be really cool. But you see that they have available the fight stick, the gamepad, and then the trackball. So I got the trackball set. 
you know, I have plenty of controllers laying around personally that even if they don't work outside of the box, I think we're going to be able to buy something on Amazon, like a May Flash adapter, which appear to work with the Astro City Mini. So I'm feeling confident that if, if we plug things in tonight and they don't work, we can probably just order something on Amazon and try it again tomorrow. Um, same for the fight stick. I have my own fight stick that we'll be trying today. Um, I didn't want to buy... I didn't, I didn't want to buy a fight stick that only works with this. I thought that was pretty limiting, right? Unless, unless it does work with PC. I'm not sure, but I already own a fight stick. I didn't need it. This is an awesome looking box. So I think this is just the... Uh, if you order just the main unit, this is the box that you'll likely be getting. Um, now, actually, now that I'm looking at it, it kind of looks purple. Which, uh, I always thought the, the buttons were pink. I think the color on this just might be a little strange. So we'll, we'll pop it open. I'm actually, I'm hoping it's more of the, the pink color. But it kind of looks purple to me. But, uh, we'll see. The box itself is pink, so we'll see. Um, alright, so I'll just pull out the rest of what's in here and just kind of display them. And then I'll readjust the camera so we can see a little bit better. Uh, but because I got the set that comes with some bonus stuff here, uh, let's see. Oh, great. So this, I believe is the CDs my set in particular comes I think it comes with like four CDs or something so I'll actually load these um, onto my computer and use them and play them uh, throughout this video so you'll be able to hear those um, I'll pop that open well I guess I could crack it open now let me grab my scissors one sec okay so let's crack this open It's a bummer we're doing this so late at night. I was hoping to have like a full day to kind of really take our time here, but uh, busy with work and stuff, so I'll just be pulling a late night tonight. But uh, okay, cool. So it looks like a total of three CDs, I think. And um, so here we have disc two. Oh, actually, wait, there is four discs. Wait, what? Oh, it's like hidden here. Look at this. <laughs> All right, it's four discs. So we have one. It doesn't necessarily say what's on them. Uh, although the images on them are a little different. It's got like, a, I don't know, different little logos here. But they are labeled disc one, two, three, and four. Stereo audio, I'm not sure. It says the Zoom Tata 35th anniversary and the Taito 70th anniversary. Uh, I don't know what Zune Tata is. I guess it, it must be the record company that made the music for a lot of these games. Zune Tata. Huh. So it's Taito 70th and Zune Tata's. But this is really cool. The inside of it, you can see it's got like cool graphic artwork of all the games that are probably on this. So I'm looking forward to popping this in and look at, listening to it. But it all comes into this nice just kind of DVD case here that snaps in. And uh, let's see. I'll take a look at the manual really quick. Yeah, so it looks like it just lists, so this manual is what lists um, all the sounds. It looks like it has like background music, but also like sound effects, like startup sounds and stuff like that. And then, oh cool, a little behind the scenes of uh, different, I guess, producers or artists that were on this. The Zoom Tata Director. Okay, pretty neat. Huh. All right doesn't hurt to have bonus stuff, right? And we keep going here. Let's see, first thing I see here, what is this? I think these are the card inserts here. Yeah, so I believe these are the card inserts that go on top of the unit. Um, yeah, I'll need my scissors again. Okay, so I just cut the tape off without cracking the seal on this plastic so we can reuse that if we want and it looks like I can just peel this back man this is so exciting I've been really looking forward to this okay I just want to keep this intact so we can store these oh first thing you got to do with any new packaging right is just give it a smell Oh, that reminds me of uh, that just like any cards. Oh, let me just get in on that. Oh, that's wonderful. It smells like a new new pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards or Pokemon cards or Magic cards. It just smells wonderful. Um, cool. So, uh, I guess these are 
Oh, okay, yeah. So they just go. I mean, I I believe this is just Space Invaders. Um, I don't. I'm not uh, so like historically, you know, up to date with all of these, and you know, these are pretty old. Like Loop on the Third. I think this was like made in the 70s, right? I imagine that these are the original graphics that you would have seen in the arcade. Just a lot smaller. These are, again, I think this whole console is actually now that it, I see it in person, it's a lot smaller than maybe I had in mind. Um, not that that's a disappointment because it's a mini console, but oh, this one looks rad. Like I'll probably just pick one and stick with it, but this uh, this Ray Force one looks awesome. I'm really looking forward to some of the shoot 'em ups. Kaiser Knuckle, just right off the bat, these are these are looking good. I think I think once you get into these like '90s ones, they really uh, uh, Darius guy. Darius Gaiden looks great as well. These are really cool. I'll go ahead and put these inserts back into the box for now until we need them. Just slide back in there. We can probably put this to the side for now. We'll pop that back open in just a moment. I think before we open the unit, again, I know I'm kind of milking the moment here, but I think we're gonna open up the controller box first. And then we'll open the main unit because, oh man, even just in itself, I got to look at this again. Look at this. That is a beautiful box. I mean, if I saw, I mean, I don't know. Looking at this, seeing that on the shelf, I, I'm interested in buying that. Just looking at it. You'd think they would show the rotation of the monitor like right on the front. I feel like that's one of the biggest selling points for this. Um, it is on the back, but yeah, so here's the controller. And this is actually cool. You know what? As much as I was saying like it's a little smaller than I anticipated, this is actually great, you know? Um, it's meant to be a mini console. That's a very tight size. I'll have the USB cable running up to this. Um, um, so I realize I'm really taking my sweet time with this. Uh, I'm just so excited to get to the main unit, but let's actually open the controller up first, just to kind of savor the moment here. But if you uh, look on the back here, it shows all the games. There's, uh, so, you know, not all of these I'm even aware of or are necessarily excited for, but the Arkanoid games in particular, and this Poochie Carrot game, um, a weird, weird name and kind of an interesting anime, you know, a little more too anime-ish for my taste personally, but it looks pretty cool. Um, and again, man, if we're able to load any games we want in here at some point, I really hope we can. Um, there are, gosh, that will unlock so many opportunities with this, uh, just like Centipede or Crystal Castles, Marble Madness. I, I really hope we can figure something out. Um, I'm going to be testing this also on the computer with MAME and seeing if it just works out of the box. And if not, we may be ordering a May Flash for some other controllers anyway, so I will try. We'll be. I'll be trying to get this to work with my computer, um, you know, at all costs. <laughs> I think I've never had some sort of a trackball in my setup with like Mame arcade cabinets and stuff. So um, this will be something new for me to have in the house. I've always had joysticks and fight sticks, and you know, built. Um, I've done some Mame machines where you know I gut out a real arcade machine and put a computer inside of it and stuff like that. Um, but never had a trackball. All right, so when we crack this open, let's make sure I didn't forget anything in here. Again, very beautiful box. Um, right on the front, you can see the SD card, which is so hilarious. They've got this, uh, again, there's probably a lot of history with Taito, so forgive me. Uh, I'm not super uh, familiar with all the Taito history. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what this game is referencing, uh, but this, this little uh, Easter Island statue on the front and it's a 32 gigabyte SD card, you guys. So I, I'm really looking forward to putting this into the computer and having a look-see to see just what all is on this. You know, assuming that uh, the main games, I don't think they're loaded on SD card. I think they're internally installed, right? I, I think um, if this is only games, there's, it's 32 gigs. 
man, 32 gigs should be able to hold all of your arcade games, right? <laughs> so we may be able to just do like a swap or something, see if that works. If not, it might be more involved than that, but this is, this is, it definitely looks cool. I'm glad it's not just a plain old SD card. That's very neat. So that'll be interesting to see if they decide to release more games, what the different designs will be. But uh, just opening this up here, yeah. <laughs> so again, um, it's not really like a disappointment or anything, um, but I, I will be frank. It's definitely more mini than I think my my the image I had in my head. Um, but you know, it's it's meant to be a mini console, and you know, now that it's sitting here on the desk, it's actually pretty cool. It, or just seeing how small and compact this can fit into like your office or onto a desk or something. Um, you know, we'll see once we. I actually want to try it and play it and give a frank, honest opinion on if I think it's too small or not. But it's cool that I could fit all of this in such a tight space. I'm gonna plug it in here. And um, if I can fit this here and maybe one other fight stick and a couple controllers, that would be really, really cool. But I'm sure this, let me, let me just put my face in here. Okay, not as satisfying a smell as the, uh, <laughs> the cards were, but it smells like a new product. It's very clean. Um, it's got a good weight to it, as far as I can tell. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so there, the the ball itself, you know, again, I've never really owned trackballs um, in like my own home or anything like that. Obviously, if you go into a real arcade, it's probably the best, like a really heavy weight ball. But this has a good amount of weight to it. Like with, if I push and then pull on it, it's got it's got a decent amount of weight, man. It's not, it doesn't feel too plasticky. I think that's a nice, like if if I if I roll my finger on that, if, if there's some weight in there. So yeah, first honest impression is it, it feels like it's got a good amount of weight to it. I don't know if uh, these sort of trackballs have any uh, like sort of drift issues that you'd see like in a Joy-Con or something with like the Nintendo Switch or an Xbox controller. I, I doubt it. I don't think they're at all the same technology, but I actually don't know. Um, so the, the coin buttons feel just like regular buttons, but these feel like actual dip switches. It feels great. And then the, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the knob. As much as I'm excited for the trackball, trackball even if it's cheap you can you could probably have fun with it although it doesn't feel too cheap Ooh. okay wow um that's almost hard to describe this feels incredible um i i don't i don't know if it if it feels different than i expected but it's it's almost as if it has like a magnet in there wow i don't know I actually don't know like the technology, you know, just like the hardware, the engineering behind this, but like seriously, when I twist it, I don't, it's got like, it's got some real, it almost feels like there's like ball bearings on it. I get, I, I might sound, I forgive my ignorance in this if, if that's literally what it is. Wow. I'm really impressed with that. Oh, this is going to be a ball. Assuming this doesn't like cheaply break by going too crazy with it, dude, Arkanoid is going to be so fun. Do, 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 Ball's coming down. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm much more impressed with the dial than I am with the ball. Not that the ball let me down, but you know, it is like a smaller ball. It's a, it's a, it's got a, it's got some weight to it, but it is pretty light. I'll admit it's not, it doesn't feel like a big, uh, billiard ball or something like that, but the, the trap, the spinner. Wow. I'm, I'm actually impressed. So this, again, just look at this. This is just, isn't that beautiful? Um, wonderful. Okay, very cool. So that sits there. That's got an SD card. Is there anything else in here? It looks like there's a manual, instruction manual. Really doubt we have to read this. Um, I'll go ahead and open it up just while we're in here, but. All right, so uh, it shows here to, oh yeah, so it just explains the start button. Um, what's this white one? That's the menu. Okay, there's a start button, a menu button, a credit button, and then your A left, A right, trackball, of course, paddle, of course, and the SD card and the USB out. So, I mean, obviously, this is all very self-explanatory, but it just visually shows everything that you do here. Plug it into the back, either one or two player, uh, pop in your SD card, and you're good to go. Okay. I guess. <laughs> That is, you know, it, it, and it's got, I think it's probably got like insurance and stuff maybe on there. I don't know. You can like register it. I doubt we'll have to do any of that. But all this stuff is cool to have. Oh, that's the wrong. Wait, was this in here? I think this is in here. 
and the controller was in this, but I'll just keep all this packaging in the box itself. But that is, that is wonderful. I really, really like that. So I'll go ahead and just keep the SD card to the side here and I'll just put this back together. I don't actually need to open this box again. I'm not gonna put the SD card back into the box. Likely we'll just keep the SD card always plugged in. So shouldn't have to open this up ever again until uh, unless we're moving. One, one thing that's really cool is I, I'm currently living in Japan, but um, I am working toward and hoping to move back to the US sometime in the next year or so. Um, and just feeling how light these are and how compact these are, like I can easily flip, you know, slide, I can definitely slide the controller into a backpack very easily um, into a carry-on bag or check-in bag. Just, it's all very compact. The main unit itself, I'll probably ship that home, um, but it's probably not impossible to put in a main bag if you were desperate enough. But I'll go ahead and just set this here. All right, the time has come. I'll get all my pretty shots and zoom-ins and stuff later, but for now, I just want to open it up, set it up just while we have the camera here and just, just get going. Uh, I've been really looking forward to this. This is actually the first mini console I've ever owned. I've always, I've done some like MAME stuff. Um, but otherwise, with like consoles, I usually just collect the original. Living in Japan, I'm able to collect a lot of retro games for a fairly good price compared to the US. Um, it's a little cheaper here, but this is my first like actual proper mini console. So, here we go. Right on the top, it says thank you. Oop. With the little, little Joy-Coon on the top there, looks really cool. It, it really does feel like a special collector's item. Oh wow, so right on the top, it's got the instruction manual, but it actually comes with some stickers. I doubt I'll use them as a, it's funny as a collector, these are meant to be used, but you'll, you're like, oh, do not put these anywhere. Oh, these are really cool though, actually. I, I could see myself putting some of these on the unit. Um, but again, like I said, I probably won't. <laughs> I'll probably keep it as is, but that's still really neat that it comes with those. <sighs> Getting close to the actual unit here. Oh, it actually comes with an HDMI cable. Okay. I was thinking I was going to have to order another one um, off of Amazon. I still may have to with my setup. This uh, looks like it's probably like a two meter cable. I'm not sure how long that is, but, or, you know, how long this one actually is. But um, either way, there's still always good to have extra HDMI cables. Uh, the USB-C looks quite long, actually. I feel like you could, I mean, I think it's meant to be able to plug it in and kind of set it on the table while you're looking at a TV. So it looks very long and it's USB. So you can always get cheap extenders. Everyone has USB, so that's not a problem. What is going on here? Ooh, I think this is, it's, it's fun taking this apart. It's all kind of stacked into a puzzle here, but it really builds the anticipation. Very well packaged. It feels very professional. This just all is really fun. So this is the insert, uh, the, the, the part that you put on top for the inserts for the instruction manuals. So set that aside for now, but I'll try not to scratch it, keep it nice and clean. This thing is going to look beautiful. I can already tell just as a, just as a piece of eye candy, even if you buy this and never play it ever, um, which I, I personally hope to play it a lot. Um, but even if you weren't the person who wanted to play this a lot, I think you would appreciate just having something this pretty on your desk. Now I might have to flip this like the last time to get this out. Ooh, okay, so this top box is just to, it's just a lid, I guess. I'll just set that down. Oh man, we're getting to it. I can, oh, I'm holding it. Ah. Wow, this is gonna be cool. I am excited. Now I'm just making sure I'm not forgetting. Oh, there's one. I think that's just an insert. I'll obviously, I'm gonna be triple checking all this, make sure there's nothing missing here, but that looks like it. Okay, I'm going to assume that's it, and I'm going to set the box out of the way for now. Oh, but here is the reveal, and I don't want to drop it, so I'm actually going to carefully set this down and peel off the plastic here. Oh my gosh. I've always, uh, as an arcade collector, I've always wanted to have a Japanese candy cabinet, but they're, they're quite expensive, and if you want to ship one out of Japan, you have to get like a shipping crate with other people and it's a, a huge ordeal. So I, I kind of gave up on it. I was on the fence for it. But now that this is out, I kind of feel like I've scratched that itch. Like I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm cool with never owning a real one, you know, um, especially like I just got married recently and probably be having kids in the next couple of years. I can't 
really expect. I'll, I'll have my own corner. I'll have my own man cave, but can't fill it up with too many arcades realistically probably. Just to have something like this that just scratches that candy cab itch is, is really cool. I'm really excited. Here we go. Wow. Oh, it's so cool looking. Oh my gosh. It's definitely a mini, but just look at this, man. Anyone who has any sort of a, any sort of a love for the 90s, and it's definitely the, it's, it's a purplish pink. Uh, I was worried, like when I looked in the box, I was like, is it like a purple? It kind of is actually, but it's definitely more on the pink side, I think, than I was worried about. There's, almost, there's actually like a back part that looks like it opens, but it doesn't. So that, that must have been in the original, and these are like, here's where like the handlebars would have been when you grab it. I'm, I'm really afraid I'm gonna be talking and then just like, don't, don't drop it. It's got a, I guess, I don't, it sounds weird, but it, it feels like the weight you'd expect it to be. It's definitely not like flimsy light. I've heard the Astro City Mini is very light. Like, it feels like there's nothing in it. Um, this feels like it's got a good amount of weight to it. It just, oh, oh, this is great. I will admit the, uh, the joystick is probably the size I, I anticipated. The buttons are smaller than I had it in mind. But again, I, I plan and hope to plug in my own controllers and stuff anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. But, but even that being said, these are really cool. And one of the biggest things with this um, is on the bottom, you are able to actually switch the joystick from eight way to four way. To my knowledge, I don't think this has ever existed outside of this. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. I'd love to hear if I am wrong because I've just never heard of that. Um, I own other joist, other fight sticks where you can do it, but you have to like, man, you have to unscrew the whole thing, go in and switch a bracket and then screw it back together. So that's cool, but you kind of have to commit like, all right, I'm, I'm playing four way games this month. All right, now I want to play fighting games. You know what I mean? This it's like, oh, I want to play a uh, street fighter. Let's go to eight way. It's just a little switch eight way. And then I'll just, and it looks like when you switch to four way, it stays pressed in. You almost expect it to like push in, twist, and then press out just like the screen will do in a moment. Uh, but it, it looks like it stays in and then it's up, down, left, right. So that's obviously awesome. Uh, if we're able to load any main stuff on it later, you'll be able to play your Donkey Kong and your Street Fighter. Um, wow. All right. So I'll, I'm going to reset up the camera in just a moment. But just before we get into like doing beauty shots and really firing this thing up, I got I to gotta pop this and twist it just once on my own here. Um, I still have the film on there, but let me just try it. Wow. <laughs> wow. It feels as good as you would imagine. That is awesome. Now, I don't think you can twist like universally. I think it's, it's you twist here and then twist back. So I'm just gonna try to twist to the right. It doesn't feel like it, yeah, it doesn't have any give there. So I think you just do left and right only and then push it back in. Yep, which makes sense. There's probably a wire plugged in. You wouldn't want to spin it. Um, wow, it's quite a contraption. Just looking on the inside here. I'll get you guys shots later, but... Wow, that's cool, man. Well, first impressions. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful items I probably own. And it's just so cool that it's first party It's and it's new, you know? Like this just came out today. So, um, all right, I guess with that, uh, it's probably a good idea for me to readjust the camera and actually fire this thing up. So let me go ahead and reset up the camera for you guys and we'll just do sort of like a initial first impressions, uh, taking a look at it and plugging in the controller and, um, <laughs> forgive me, I am pretty tired. It's, it's pretty late here. So sorry if I'm rambling, but I'm, I'm very giddy and excited for this. So, um, let's do it. Okay, so I've got us resituated here. Kind of a tight space, but I think I've got this set up. So uh, I'll go ahead and show, I know it's a little hard to see, but here is the USB cable. Uh, I don't know if this gives any reference to how long it is, but it's a pretty decent length. Sorry that this isn't the best angle of that, <laughs> if that gives an idea. It does not come with a wall outlet. So keep that in mind if you're ordering this and you don't have a spare laying around. Most people probably do, but I just happened to be lucky and had one extra one. You know, I could have salvaged it from something else, but I didn't really want to do that. 
Um, but I found a spare little Sony. Ooh. Oh, wow. So that's pretty neat. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that again. I didn't even turn it on. I just plugged it in. And uh, it looked like it lit up there. So let me, I'm going to unplug it from the wall. And then I'm going to plug it right back in. Wow, that looks cool. Okay, so that sort of just shows that you have power. Uh, really quick before we start, um, I just want to make a note if you happen to buy um, this uh, instruction card insert. Although I read Japanese, uh, the instruction manual wasn't visually clear at all as to how you put this thing in. Um, so I hope this helps, and I think I did it correctly. But it almost looks like it's the same on both sides, but it's a little different. Um, if you look on the bottom, there are some teeth. Um, when you see this in person, it'll make sense. But if you look here... Now, if you look on the bottom, you'll see some teeth. You want those teeth pointing toward you with having the, the little hole slit here uh, facing away from you. And then what you're going to do, and then what you're going to want to do with the teeth kind of pointing toward you, like I mentioned, you're going to want to tilt it down this way and then clip it back. It almost feels like you're going to break it, but it's fine. I was a little nervous. You kind of get it slit into there. And then if you just like barely push it, you'll kind of see it's not actually in, it's kind of floppy. But if you get it in and then just kind of gently, firmly kind of set it in there, you don't hear a click necessarily. But then now watch, if I kind of like play on it, it's totally in there. But then you can easily just kind of lean it forward and it'll come out. So I don't, I hope I'm doing that right. I hope I'm not stressing this at all, but I think that's correct. It feels wrong, I'll admit. It doesn't feel right. Um, but it's in there. Once you get it in there, it's in there. So I haven't actually put one in, but I'll just kind of place the acrylic on top for now. And, uh, our audio is still recording. That's good. <laughs> and yeah, we saw it light up there. Uh, sorry if there's any glare. I can, I can readjust our setup here if we need to, um, in just a moment. But for now, this will be fine, I think. Um, I still have the film on here, but let's just go ahead and boot this up as is and see how it looks. So there's a red switch on the back right side here. Here we go. I love how it lights up. So we're in Tate mode, so you saw it was sort of to the side there. Okay, so now it's in Tate mode. And I should probably get the, the screen uh, adjusted on the camera here. So let me cut here. So let me actually get the, the, the camera adjusted a bit so the screen looks better. So just one moment. All right, I just adjusted my lighting a little bit and I'm actually gonna try to, I'm gonna boot this up in uh, landscape mode just to start. Um, so the switch is on the back right here. Here we go. Wow, I love how it lights up. That looks really cool, the marquee. That's wonderful. I'll bet you could probably even like swap this out almost. It might be, I'm not sure. I, I wonder if even with the stickers that came with it, you could get creative and like put your own little thing on there. Um, it does come pre, so although this is the Japan exclusive model, uh, if you can see, I know it's a little small. Um, I will be capturing all of this later and showing it like in detail um, to have B-roll of that. But as you can see, well, why am I even saying that on camera? I'll just cut to it, right? So I'll just make note of what I need to B-roll cut. So anyways, so as you can see, this is the Japan only model. And uh, right out of the gate, it comes with uh, Japanese, English. And then I think this is two forms of chi like simplified Chinese and Chinese. So I'll go ahead and do it in English. Um, and it's probably, we're, we're probably getting some reflection because of the film. I hope it's, I hope the reflection goes away once we peel it off. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oops. I hope this gets rid of some of the glare, but this is going to feel good. Wow, a part of me almost wants to keep that on. Uh, okay, I got rid of a little bit of the glare, so sorry that there's a little, um, just my kind of studio lights I have in here, there's going to be a, a little bit of a glare on that screen, but I hope it's, I hope it's good enough that you can see what's going on here. 
All right, so I'm gonna go and boot this up in English. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I've I've heard this little theme song that's playing so many times as I've been uh, watching trailers and stuff for this coming out. Just I can't, I couldn't wait for this to come out. I really can't describe how excited I've been for this. This is really cool. All right, so um, I'm, I'm personally very familiar with the games that are on here. I'll be showing more of this a little later, but just as like a first impression, this is really neat. It's got like a little splash of each game here. Um, I don't think they're, I think they're ordered by year, I would imagine, like starting with Space Invaders. Uh, you see a lot of these older games, Adventure Canoe, you know, that kind of like, quite frankly, look like shit. <laughs> you know, they're older games, so I'm not like, you know, trying to be mean on that, but let's see, it says 1982, Elevator Action 1983. I've, I've heard, I've, I've never played Elevator Action, and I, I'm kind of ashamed. Well, no, I don't think there's any shame in being an arcade fan and having some games you've never played. If anything, it's more exciting. There's some games I've just simply never played. Bubble Bobble. Kiki Kai Kai is going to be great. Man, there's, there's so many games. I don't even know where to start. So I'll just do like a quick scrub here. Whoa. Well, that's not good. Um, interesting. Well, I have multiple outlets I can try here. Um, I am using some studio lights at the moment that could be... That's pretty scary, huh? Um, huh, I'm trying to think. The, the, the USB is currently connected to a wall outlet that also has my air conditioner plugged in, a little Japanese uh, air con, but the air con's not even on at the moment. So that's not, man, that kind of killed the mood, didn't it? I was like, oh, so excited, and then pew. Let's hope that doesn't happen again. If it does, I'm gonna have to get, you know, just try some other outlets and some cables and turn some things on and off and, huh, definitely. Am I plugged in all the way here? Maybe it's a little loose, huh? I have no idea. I guess it's possible that I just like, by pulling down the joystick hard enough, it like jiggled the cable. Like, I'll just kind of jiggle it here. I don't, I'm not gonna try to break it, but I mean, it feels pretty firm in there, I don't know. I really hope that doesn't happen again. That was not fun. <laughs> I'll be frank, I did not enjoy how that felt. Um, but I'm just gonna fly around here. I just wanted to see if the, yeah, so if you hold it long enough, it goes into an infinite scroll at a very high speed. Um, let me just see here. I actually, um, I should pull out the manual, but it says like D, E, F, and A. So I'm assuming this is A here. Um, you can favorite a game. A bubble Bubble will probably be a favorite. Let me just go and push this. Or, or I wonder, actually, D, E, and F are probably these three. So if I hit this pink one here. Okay, let me go back. I wonder what I pushed. Console settings, perhaps? It shows, like, I, I think there's save states here. And then it says the controls, and then like your, your, ah, D, E, A, and B. It's likely these four, so hang on, actually. So, D, wait, one more time. If this is D, then this will favorite it. Okay, so that, you can favorite your games. That's pretty cool. Uh, and it looks like there's even a sorting option. So, let's try that. F is this one here. Oh, I just started Bubble Bobble. Okay, my first game is going to be... I might go back here, but... Also, I want to see if you can adjust the volume. Um, one credit here. That's the pause. Oh, wow, this is cool. Now it is the beginning of a fantastic story. Let's make a journey to the Cave of Monsters. <laughs> I gotta admit, I've never really played this game. I've seen it in arcades before. As a kid, I didn't really get it. Are you just supposed to kill the monsters? Is it like Dig Dug? I guess we'll find out. Oh, I just jumped on the bubbles. I realize me saying I've never played Bubble Bobble doesn't sound like I'm really a big arcade guy, but you know, there's a lot of good arcade games and I've, there's just some I've never really played. Okay, so I seem, it seems once you get them all in a bubble, you then shoot them once. Did I touch them or shoot them? I actually don't remember, let me see. You can't jump through the floor. It doesn't seem. 
Oh, okay. Ah, you can kill him immediately. Okay, okay. So it's almost like uh, Mario and um, Luigi. Oops. Oh, oh, I lost those points. Okay. So it, it kind of reminds me of this, the original Super Mario Brothers, where you kind of hit them once and then when they're upside down, you stand on them. Cool. I'm kind of, you know, not trying too hard here, but we'll be playing a lot of that. That's really cool. Let's go ahead and go, out, get, go back to the menu. Um, okay, so you can save. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and just like favorite a couple. Ah, oh, so that's the sorting option that I was wondering about. So yeah, I'm just enjoying kind of getting familiar with this here. Um, again, so D, E, F, A, B, C. Okay, so that actually makes sense. A, B, C, D, E, F. Starting from the bottom left. Okay, that makes more sense. Ah, I started a game again. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Let me try to pause it. I don't want to spoil it. I want to come back. I want to play it when I want to play it. So I'll come back to that. A, B, C, D, E, and F. I guess that makes sense. So, um, I'll go ahead and favorite that just to try it. Console settings. Ah, so look at that. You can change the volume and stuff here. Oh, you can go even louder. Whoa. It's pretty good volume. Just because it's late here, I'm going to put this at a two. Hope that's okay for you guys. You can adjust the brightness. It died again. All right. Um, well, okay. I'm going to swap out the USB... Uh, I'm using this Sony one. Perhaps it's just not compatible. Like perhaps the voltage on it is weird. I mean, it's USB, right? I don't know if there's very much variation in USB. I'm not a, a electrician by any means, but input 11, 100 volts to 240 volts. Um, and then it says output of five volts at 0.5 amps. I think is that's what that is. I'll try a different one here. I'll be right back. That's, man, that, that really kills the mood. <laughs> I hate that. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with a different one. It's a little bit more annoying. It's going to look ugly sticking out of the wall. But it says it's 5 volts and then 3 amps. So, again, I don't know. We'll see. Um, there may be a specific kind of adapter you have to use, but it sucks that it didn't come with one, right? Maybe I missed it. I don't, I, I don't think it came with one, though. And look, it didn't even save that I favorited this, so that's kind of annoying. Okay. Well, um, let me see here. I'm going to favorite that. Let me just kind of play around here again. Okay, so we, what were we just doing that killed it? We, uh, sorry, um, console settings is E. It's a little confusing, but it's actually not. It's funny that I say like A, B, C, D, E, and F is confusing, but I've never thought of them. Like, they're not labeled, and I've never thought of them that way. But we were playing with the volume and the brightness. So let me try that again. All right, I'm, I'm hoping it was just, I mean, I might just have to order something on Amazon that's like more like reliable, but I don't know even what that could be. Oh, you can change the background music. I'm gonna do that because I've heard that song a million times. I like this one. Here, let me turn this up for you guys. Ooh, that's majestic. Wow. It's like actually orchestrated music. <gasps> it's like Disneyland. Okay. We can, can we turn off the music? Um, it's nice, but... Let me see here. Let's check all our options here. Filter on and off. I, I imagine the filter is like a CRT filter, perhaps. It says demo settings three minutes later, none or 10 minutes later. Demo settings. Okay. Legal notices, restore to factory settings. There's probably updates you could probably do later. Or at least the settings you can just reset it. I wonder if they will be releasing like updates that you could install. This music is, um, I 
Is there really no way to turn off the, the background music? I, I hope you can. It's, you know, it's not the worst, but you would hope you could um, have it muted, right? Okay, I'm going to keep playing around here. Like, you wouldn't want that music on all the time, right? I'll be really surprised if you can never turn that off. Demo settings. I don't know what that is. Demo settings is likely... Like, if you leave the unit on for three minutes, it goes into a demo mode, so maybe the music turns off. Maybe, like, right when you boot it up, it plays the music. But still, you have to listen to the song for three minutes before... Huh. I almost want to... Yeah, so, again, if, if there's no way to turn off that background music, I'll be pretty disappointed about that. As, as, as excited as I am for this unit, I can frankly say that that is uh, unfortunate. You would really think there'd be a none option here, because personally I would go for that, just have it silent, and maybe have it play like demo music on specific games. Perhaps they'll release an update or something, but I definitely don't want to hear that song. I'll put it on this one for now, this is the coolest one. Um, okay, well, let's uh, let's go ahead and do what this is meant for. Um, I, You know, as much as I want to play just a normal game that's on here, like I think we can kind of assume what's going to happen, you know? Uh, but let's see, like, if I go to, like, let's say I go to Adventure Canoe, I'm gonna go to the settings. Oh, sorry. Um, the game settings is what I want to go to. Okay, so, you can, it looks like there's a sorting option, actually, for, okay, so, just cut that, okay. So, let's take a look at the sorting option. Um, it says right here, sort by release year, that's probably how I'll keep it, I actually like that, but you can sort it by name, or favorite. So let's try favorite. I, I favorited two games. Okay, so it just throws them at the top. That's pretty neat, actually. Um, and then it looks like even in that mode, it's still alphabetical by default with just your top games at the top. I think that's pretty cool. So like as you're playing, you're like, oh, I like this game. Add it, add it, add it as a favorite. And uh, then like proceed and because I'm going to be discovering some games in here that I've probably never played, you know. So I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and unfavorite uh, these. Let's see. And reset. I'll go ahead and try name. I mean, we know what it's going to do, right? But that's not what I personally want. I like the release here. I think that's pretty cool. Got to start from the top. I'll start with this Adventure Canoe game, I guess. Um, so I'll click on that. All right. So, okay. So once you're in here, you have save states. And it looks like there's four for each game. And then if you hit E, which is this top middle one here. Oh, and okay, first of all, it's a four-way game. So let me make sure. Uh, and so wait, I want to be careful too. So the cable sticks out in the back. But if you want to switch the controls, you do have to lift it up. So it's not um, bad. I just wish, I almost wish it was like on the side. Or like a button or something. Because just having to lift up the whole unit with cable sticking out, it's a little concerning. If I slide this to the back where it's hanging off, like the cable's hanging off, then I could tilt it. Um, I just don't want to like bend any cables or anything, right? But uh, that's fine. So you, I just kind of, it's light enough you can kind of just pick it up, twist, put it back down. It's a mini console. That is what it is. But uh, it's it's not the most fun thing to do, I'll admit. But now this is in four way, so that's set for this game. Uh, so it tells you your controls. You have uh, rapid fire, speed up, fire, and speed up. So rapid fire, fire, speed up, and speed up. Okay, um, and there's game settings. I'm going to try that. So I believe these are the dip switches for the games. Uh, so if you guys are new to arcade games at all, basically every game, I think most games, if not all games, have a, something called dip switches, which are literally switches that are were on the original games. Um, so like if, for example, you wanted to, to be on free play, you know, you're holding hosting an event and you make all your games free play, but it costs ten dollars to get into the arcade or something like that. You could go into the dip switch settings and set it to free play. Um, some games don't offer that, though. So the arcades anyways uh, would get creative with that. But anyways, you can you can set like how many points until you get a one up, how many lives you have, things like that. So every game has different dip switch settings. More or less, they're sim they're pretty similar, um, but that's pretty cool that we have access to that. It'd be a bummer if they were like set by default. I think it's really cool that they give you the full game. 
I'm gonna try this adventure canoe game. So I'm gonna go back, or wait, no. Oh, I think we're ready to go, actually. I'm set into four-way here. New file. Here we go. Okay. Adventure canoe. Okay. I was like ready to play it. <laughs> nope, we gotta put in coins. So let me just get familiar here. So okay, so the top the the top left one, it actually clicks in. It's not like a like a dip switch per se, although these are like nice. It's a, like a clicky button, but that's fine. It's not like mushy at all. It's it's actually pretty it's actually nice to push. This white one is you wanna avoid that. That's like if you want to do save states and stuff. Has but it shows like the controls if you forget. So this is this is gonna be really fun to um explore and uh discover these games one one thing i should note and this is like a small subtle thing is the way that i'm seated right now i'm sitting in that stool that we saw um at the beginning of the video um it's a pretty small stool um now this is a fairly low desk i mean ideally you'd have this on like your computer desk or on like a bar counter or something like that um i will say though at the height that i'm sitting at and this being a little lower the fact that the panel is completely flush with the edge of the bezel here aesthetically i think it looks aesthetically i think it looks wonderful my camera just died yeah i'll just say again i don't i don't own the sega astro mini city but when i the, the main reason i never bought it and i'm a big sega fan is that the screen was like 16 by 9 with black bars on the side even more than you know what i mean like it they, they couldn't even like have the 16 by 9 like hidden behind the bezel i just i think if the screen is not flush with the bezel it looks terrible and the mini is already a small like like the in the astro city mini is actually even smaller than this one i'll put up a picture of what i've seen online from like other people who have posted about it it's tiny um personally i i'm i'm passing on it um and it's not me to be negative i just personally don't um, need it, but if the screen looked better, I would have considered it. You know, it's only like a hundred bucks. It's a little cheaper than this one, to be fair. Uh, but it doesn't do this. Man, I can't get enough of doing this. That's one thing you'll notice, I think, if you pick this up, is you're gonna really enjoy flipping this screen. Now, the, the unit kind of moves when you do it, so you kind of have to grab it from the back. Just kind of be careful. Um, but that's a lot of fun. <laughs> this is so neat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a coin in here. And here we go. Okay. So I think speed up was like this one. So it's probably kind of like um, joust in that you can kind of... Let's just not speed up. And then you can fire and rapid fire. So what's the reason you wouldn't rapid fire? Oh, there's a canoe behind me. Oh my god. So this is definitely an old game, but you're probably meant to go like this. I saw some people playing this, I think, and they were complaining about the controls. I mean, admitted, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I don't think I'm a huge fan of that, uh, first impression-wise. You know, it's, I can respect that it's an older game. Yeah. I mean, I can see you being with your buddies like, you gotta escape, get out of there! Yeah. It's hard to switch from like this. I, I, I'm, I'm imagining you're meant to to do that. If you just do a single press, it's not very fun. It's kind of frustrating. But like this, it's like joust, I guess. That's hard though. I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm building a sweat. I'm being straight up. Like, and I died. Hmm. Okay, I don't really know. <laughs> I, it's almost. I almost want to say I don't know the point of that game. Um. All right, I can I can appreciate it though. You, you'd almost hope that they would have added like the ability to like just like hold a button down that speeds you up. Uh, but I don't know. It's an original game. I'm not going to complain there. Um, uh, yeah, but what I was I was going to say actually was that oh if you if you have if you're sitting above the monitor at a certain height the the bezel almost like covers the screen a little bit that you it covers some of the text now that's a very minimal complaint because it's just you know you know what it says it says high score it says score it says score i'm just mentioning it just so that you know but it's like i like it's definitely not like breaking for me at all but also as soon as i do this i, I guess we'll see how it looks for different games uh, which way is it this way shoot don't spin it the wrong way um that that looks great so now there's like black bars on the top and bottom 
and it's flush on the side and it looks wonderful like it, it you you have to have some black bars probably in most circumstances to some extent i think this is done very well as long as one part of it is flush it just looks great um okay so i'll go ahead and back out here and note to future eric self you're obviously just recording your reactions you can cut what you don't want to include um and and kind of decide probably tomorrow we'll have like a better idea of what we want the video to be but in-depth review here we go all right so now okay so i guess i guess we kind of get the gist so far the the unit hasn't died since i switched out the power outlet so i i'm not sure what they recommend you get i guess you guys might want to check online to see what they uh they might have a recommendation or something um but i'll say that the one that i believe i'm using is obviously usb 5 volt out but i think it's three amps was the difference between the other one i had was using previously and so far it hasn't died on me so um maybe just look into that uh if you're like shopping for one or obviously i'm sure you'll probably just dig through your drawer like i did until you find one that works but so far this one seems fine now i think you guys get the gist here um i certainly want to try using the uh spin trackball and the spinner controller um, and also uh, take a look at the SD card and just see how it looks when you pop it in, what happens. And then we can also take a look at... Now, I really want to take a look at the trackball controller, uh, the spinner, the games that it supports, of course. Um, I think you guys get the idea. As much as I could go through each of these games individually, at that point, we're just checking out the games, which I'll be uploading videos for as well. Of just my, I want to discover these games uh, for the first time and give my thoughts and reviews on them as well. Um, but let's go ahead and pop in the SD card, and then later we should pop it into the computer and actually see what's on here. Uh, these games are pre-installed on here. So I suppose if they do release multiple packs, they'll probably always come out as an SD card that you pop in and swap out. I hope they make a lot of them. I'd like to support and buy any one that they put out, but I also want to see what's on there and see if it's possible to put your own games on there. So um, let's go ahead and pop this open here. And I, I muted the volume because I wasn't able to mute. Like it, it never turned off the music. I, I may have not reached the three minutes on this, uh, this whatever this demo setting is. Um, but I really don't like that you can't just mute the menu. Just the menu. If you can have the games have volume, but just mute the menu, that obviously that makes sense, right? So I hope if anyone here in this hears this, maybe there's an update. Or maybe maybe I'm, I'm missing something and there's something you can do here. But um, I think that's quite a little bit of... Well, that's unfortunate. You know, I'd, I'd love to just keep this thing on. Uh, you could obviously mute it and keep it on in the background, but I'd love to have it just mute. Yeah, anyways, you get what I'm saying. All right, so here's our neat little SD card here. Let's pop it in and see what happens. Assuming it just goes in up right here. Oh. Uh, am I putting it in the wrong way? No? What's going on here? Doesn't seem to want... Maybe I need a fingernail or a... Uh, I don't have long fingernails. It's not clicking in though. Does it, is it, is it in? Hang on. There's no way that's in. Like I didn't hear a sound or anything. Maybe you have to plug in the controller for it to, maybe that's in. I, I, <laughs> if that's in, that's weird. It's like a very soft, if you press on it, it feels like it's gonna go, but I'm I'm telling you I'm I'm really pushing it in there, and it's not. So it might just that might be the design that you kind of just softly set it in and it's good, but it might need the controller plugged in to, to activate or something. I don't know. Let's just, just give it a try. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is the first controller that uh, we're going to try with this bad boy. Fairly long cable here. Uh, let me just... Alright, so I'm just plugging it in into the one player slot in the back. Alright, that's plugged in. I'm really... Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's not... The SD card isn't registered here. When I spin the wheel, nothing happens. So you would, you would hope you could like use the wheel to scroll through your games and then select it. That would be a lot of fun. I don't know if it supports that. Um, but again, I don't see the games. 
Uh, I know, I know one is like Arkanoid. So let's uh, sort by name and then look for Arkanoid. Yeah, it's not there. Okay, that's this is kind of weird. <laughs> Am I uh, meant to? That's really strange. Okay, now I'm when I look on the side, I see that there's like a slit in the bottom. So maybe you really are supposed to just jam it in there. Oh, I got it. Wow. Wow. So I'm a guy who bites his fingernails, I'll admit. Um, I do not have long fingernails. That is tough to push in. If you don't have like a like a business card or like again just a fingernail you should be able to get in but there is a slit kind of on the under on the underside of the sd card that allows you to kind of <clears throat> but like it leaves a mark like it's pretty tough you know ideally you probably wouldn't be doing that too much um i plugged it in and i actually don't see the games uh i know i know arkanoid is one of them maybe they're maybe they're in a different like list here or am i meant to turn this off and on let me try that i'll turn this off oh it's my first time hearing the shut down that was a cool little jingle maybe you're meant to turn it off and then on oh okay paddle and trackball game Ooh. Okay, so that's how this unit works. If you plug in an SD card, it loads it loads only those games. So let's test something else here. I'm excited to, to try it, but let me unplug the spinner. And I'm just going to leave the SD card in. And well, I think I have a contender for what is going to be the first instruction card that goes on top of the marquee. I think it's going to be Arkanoid, man. That is awesome. Okay. Uh, unsafe progress will be lost. That is fine. All right. So luckily that game is good enough that they put three of them on here. So there's Arkanoid, Arkanoid Returns, and then Arkanoid Revenge of Doe. I look forward to playing all of those. I want to try one more though. That is, uh, ooh, I've been looking forward to this one. It's an interesting name. It's called Camel Tree. <laughs> it's literally like, I don't know if there's actually any sort of a camel inside of the game, but like if you look at the logo, it's a camel. I, I'm not even going to try to begin to understand it or pretend to understand it. Um, rotate the maze to maneuver the ball to the exit within the time limit. The shake button makes the ball jump or speed up if held down. Interesting. This one sounds like fun. I've been looking forward to this. Now is this, this is not Tate. Okay. Ooh, so this game has a little bit of uh, black bars on the bottom and top. So even though I'm sitting at a very high height, uh, nothing is cut off by the bezel. Which I don't mind if the bezel, bezel does that. I actually, actually, I almost prefer that it's flush, even if you can't see it a bit. Because you could always just lower yourself or raise the unit up. Okay, let's give this a whirl. I doubt we need language or anything. Uh, I feel like I'm pressing credits. Okay, okay. Oh, so see like this is, see, this is what I mean in the main menu. You should be able to use this as your selector. That is fun. Uh, training course, beginner course. Let's do the beginner course. So I think you just, you just rotate the stage to get your ball. Whoa. Yeah, that, it feels good, man. Again, I, I, I can't, I don't have anything else to compare it to, and I don't play a lot of these spin wheel dial or uh, spinner games in like a real arcade. I imagine nothing is going to beat the real thing. Um, I'll, I'll say like from a Frank, hurry up. Okay, we got it. I'll say frankly, there are moments where it feels like it almost like catches. Like if you, if you hold it at a certain, if you hold the, if I hold the spinner and kind of like put pressure down on it and then spin it, it kind of grinds almost. 
So maybe there's just kind of like a sweet spot to make sure you prevent that. But there, there's times where I'm like, I, I want to do like a really sensitive, um, you know, spin like, ooh. Like, you know, like you're trying to maneuver through here and be really careful, but you're like, it's like literally caught on something, which is kind of weird. But it's only on like, how do I say? It's only on one particular position of the dial. So uh, like a, a 360 rotation is fine, but, or mostly, but then there's like one sliver of the dial that will, it feels like it always catches. If that makes sense, like, like right here, it's caught. And I can get past that cat. Is that normal? Is there, is there meant to be like a catch point? So you can like, you can like, all right, I, I need to be really uh, precise. So I'm going to set it right above the catch. Let me see. It's hard to explain. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it just, um, maybe you can open it up and like grease it. I imagine there's probably people like that could uh, hop in the comments here and just be like, yeah, you want to just put a little grease on that and you'll be fine. Cause it, it has a wonderful weight, but they're like, even now that I'm spinning it, maybe I just, maybe it just has to get like broken in. I want a game that I can really go like really whip it around. All right, let me try one more with that. That was a tough, I'm actually going to do the easy rank. That was harder than I expected. Okay, now I'm gonna play again and try to do really precise, precise, precise movements, and I'll be frank if there's any sort of like a catch. Man, that felt pretty good. Maybe I just maybe the controller just needs to be broken in. I hope so. Because there's like oh nope, it's catching here. There's like a really really precise spot that the dial kind of like kind of like grabs. It almost feels like there's like a slot made for it to do that. I don't know why that would be the case. I really hope you just have to break it in because uh, well yeah otherwise it's wonderful um, and even that's a pretty slight thing but like if you're playing Arkanoid you know you don't want to you don't want to blame the controller right you want to be able to be like, oh, okay I could have got I could have been a little smoother this is a neat game though I could see you play I mean like this is just fun to even just go kind of silly um, it definitely fit when it's working it feels great um, there's just, yeah, there's just like a certain like spot, like a sweet spot or a, a, a not sweet spot, a sour spot that uh, it just kind of like, like catches and you got to like press through it. I don't know how to explain it. All right, I'll go until we die here. So I think that the idea with this is to keep your falling momentum and not hit as little walls as possible. It goes without saying, but it's, it's a... Uh, never seen this game probably seen similar games though it's very fun it plays it plays well like all all of those concerns aside that's a cool game I'm definitely gonna enjoy having a beer and seeing how far I can go with that one right this is gonna be a great console just to have in the house you know long day of work maybe uh, you know wife is busier with a friend or you know come home from work tired maybe uh you know the missus is heading to bed a little early and you're like you know i want to have just a you know you get home a little after a long day of work and you just want to have a cold cold crisp beer and play some games man this is definitely cool it says something about pressing A, you can like, the ball can uh, rumble or something? I, I wasn't sure what it, maybe that's like a precaution if you, uh, almost like pinball maybe, where if the ball gets stuck, you can kind of shake the, I don't know. I press A and nothing seems to happen. It says press to, uh, it had the instructions there and it said hold it to do something. I'm holding it, Let's see what happens. Maybe you can control your speed. All right, can I pause this? I should probably read the instruction cards, right? <laughs> but it does say something about if you hold down the button and then release, something happens. Uh, perhaps I need to grab an item or I don't know. You know what? Part of the fun of these arcade games and the sign of a really good one is if you can figure it out after only a quarter or two without needing instructions. But we have those instruction cards. I'll be playing the heck out of these games, rest assured. Ooh. 
Ah! So maybe maybe when you're touching uh, breakables is when you can kind of activate that ability. The easy sage is very fair. I definitely we want to try. I want to try using the the trackball. Lucky chance. Okay, I'm gonna go and cl close out of this game. As cool as it is, I know I uh, ruined the very climatic uh, lucky chance there. But there's these other games. Marine Date, kind of an older one. Um, Strike Bowling does not look very good to me. It's an old 1982 bowling game. I mean, I, I'm willing to try it. But I'm definitely, I think there's going to be better games with the trackball. This, <laughs> okay, I've been looking forward to this one, actually. This Civalin. What was the other one we were looking forward to? Puchy, Puchy Carrot. That one looks like a fun game. Um, but this Civalian, you're like a dragon. Well, we'll just figure it out. Guide the Golden Mecha Dragon through mazes, uh, which change every play. Oh, so it's kind of roguelike in that way. That's cool. Uh, to battle giant bosses and reach one of the game's 100 plus endings. What? Wow. All right, so it looks like you just spin the, the ball in the direction you want to go and press A to fire. I saw this a lot online. It looked interesting. Oh, so it actually has like a full ROM boot up. Interesting. Hardware initialize. Look at that. That's like a full uh, proper reset of the system. Okay, Ooh, okay. Some deep Japanese. We have uh, Asobi Kata o Monabi Tsutsu Pure Ga. Uh, I think that said, that either said um, play around where it teaches you how to play or, or, the, or the opposite. <laughs> one of the two. Chapter one, a bunch of story. We'll translate it out another time. Okay, maybe this one had don't read the rules. <laughs> what the? F Oh, this is kind of sick, but it's like, it's hectic. Wow, it's exactly what it looks like. That's kind of cool, though. I'm glad this is on here. And ooh, you know what? As I move, I'll probably, uh, as I, yeah, I said, as soon as I die, I'll show you guys here. I'm just going to show you the precision on this ball. It's really nice, actually. Like, that feels, you kind of are meant to do this kind of, like, really send him off into a direction and he bounces off walls. But if you need to like just precise, you can kind of just like rub your hand across. Wow, this is cool actually. I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be the most fun game ever, but you kind of like put him in a spot and then shoot. <laughs> Dude, this is crazy. This is really interesting. I've never seen this game. I mean, I've, I've, I've ooh. My cable loves to just wrap right around that joystick, huh? Um, outside of, uh, you know, getting excited for this. Oh, so you can kind of push the units, the enemies away from you. I see. So if they're getting close to you, you don't necessarily have to run away. You can just, <clears throat> okay, definitely, uh, definitely hard. We'll figure this out. It looks great. I like the music too. That's, that's, a, that's going to be a cool one to figure out that, that really does play. Um, I'm impressed. I think the trackball, like upon, like just feeling it, it feels, it feels almost like prosumer. Like it's definitely not cheap, but it's probably not arcade quality, like to a real size ball, um, playing like a golf game or something. But that precision of just doing this is really precise. I'm impressed. I'm sure that strike bowling is a good example. I think the marine date is also one that uses it. Ooh, we got to play some golf. Birdie King, and I think it's Tate mode. So yeah, just you just use the trackball. Uh, game settings. Oh, so you do have access to the joystick while it's in this trackball mode. That's interesting. So although it requires the, it requires you have the trackball plugged controller plugged in. Um, you still have access to these controls. You just don't have access to the games. That's really unfortunate. You'll, I'll probably just keep the SD card like in, but just pop it out. And it's just going to be like soft because you could kind of like softly set it in there. Actually, you know what? Here, I'm going to before I play this, I'm going to power it down. OK, I just powered it down um, and I'm actually curious if this was an intentional design where if they maybe like 
um, you know, on a, on a technical level, they said, well, you can't have the SD card plugged in and still have access to the original games. Perhaps. Let's just assume that's the case. Maybe this was an intentional design to kind of have the SD card be able to live in there without being plugged in. Because I can really push it in like that, and it's not plugged in. So now if I want to play the games, you just have to really press it in there. It's kind of a pain. And then turn the system back on. And like, okay, now I'm playing trackball games. And of course, make sure you have your controller plugged in. So that's the only like, you know, you ideally you'd probably have the controller right next to it. So it's not, it's not too bad actually. I thought it'd be like quite a pain to, like I have to pull out the SD card and move it. No, you can actually just keep it there. Just kind of settled in there. That's actually not bad. And this is Tate. Any excuse to switch between Tate mode and landscape is very fun. Oh, I forgot there's, man. So, um, I'm reaching like the end of my energy for tonight, but I'm really looking forward to playing this. I'll probably play in the morning before I go to work, but also um, uh, we'll be doing another session tomorrow. So, um, but we'll be looking at what's on the SD card and stuff as well. But I was, I guess I don't really have to mention any of that. But um, who we're reaching three in the morning here, so probably reaching the end of my energy for today's session. But I'm already looking forward to having like more energy and playing tomorrow. This is really cool, man. I, I, I'm just I'm just realizing how many games are on this, you know, maybe at first glance you see that uh, or are we actually already playing at first glance you might not see the library and be like I don't know like I mean some of the bubble bubbles cool and you know New Zealand story looks interesting You know, I like some shoot 'em ups and there's some like interesting kind of weird fighter games on here like I like admittedly like off the bat nothing like jumped out enough where it's like oh i have to have this as much even like the sega astro city has like shinobi and um space harrier those games popped out to me personally a lot more but the unit itself just didn't sell me i didn't like the way the monitor looked the way that the screen was like punched in and like it didn't it wasn't flush with the bezel like this one is this i think is an awesome it's awesome um i'll give like more i'll, I'll obviously like say that more eloquently when i'm less tired here but this is aesthetically exactly what you want in a mini console. The size is good enough. You can absolutely play it as is. I think this would be perfect to have in any house that has some sort of a bar. You know, I mean, not a lot of houses have that. But, you know, say you have an apartment with a countertop and you have some friends over. This is awesome to have in the corner. Are you kidding me? This is really cool. And you can plug it in to the TV. I'm, I'm impressed. This is absolutely checking off. You know, there's some software things that I think could be improved, like the background menu music not being able to be turned off and um, access to the SD card and things like that. But otherwise, man, this is really checking off a lot of my boxes. I'm, I'm really impressed. And, and initially, uh, or uh, to my point, uh, it, I don't think the games that were listed necessarily jumped out at me as much as the Sega Astro City, but the aesthetic enough was so cool in the rotating screen. I thought this is definitely worth giving a chance. Um, and, and, you know, obviously hoping that hopefully with an SD card slot, I really <laughs> would be surprised if we can't get our own games on here at some point in some factor in some, in some form. Um, but even if you can't, man, now that I'm playing this and I've, I've only played like two or three titles and I'm having quite a bit of, I'm, I've only played a couple titles and I'm already having, I've, I've already played a couple of titles, <laughs> no titles. Um, and I'm already having a lot of fun uh, to, to remember and remind myself that there's games like uh, Darius Gaiden on here and um, the fighting games and Bubble Bobble. And man, I just, the, especially Darius, I think is going to be going to get a lot of play. Elevator Action, um, I think are going to be the real heavy hitters on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and try this one. Uh, my, my camera's dying here and I'll call it a night for tonight's session. And uh, tomorrow we'll take a look on the computer uh, on what is actually on the SD card, see if maybe there's anything we can <laughs> try to do. I, I really doubt it's going to just let us put on ROMs and work off the, you know, right out of the gate, but um, I'll at least take a look and see what's on there and see if maybe we can get a, a hint at what would need to um, happen in order to make that happen. But uh, I want to, let's play some golf. So I imagine we just, just, I'm just going to flick the ball here. Whoop. Whoa. Hey, that's pretty neat. You know, that's, it's, it's exactly what you expect. Not a lot of settings. The bird's kind of funny. And yeah, just depending on your sensitivity, you get on the green or not. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm spinning too hard, I guess, on the green here. I'll go really, oh my God. It's harder than it looks. 